We are continuing our cricket discussion on the Sportsmax Zone following their historic win over Australia on Sunday. Captain Craig Brathwaite hit back at former Australia fast bowler Rodney Hogg for labelling the West Indies team pathetic and hopeless in the build-up to the second test. Brathwaite's response to the 72-year-old started at the post-match presentation and continued at the press conference. Test cricket obviously is, is, is never you know, an e easy thing to do and winning test matches. Um, but you know, if you if you have guys disrespecting West Indies and West Indies cricket, and us as players are playing, um, you know, it's, it's hurtful. You know, it's hurtful. Um, so for, for us to come and do it, it was great. Uh, as I said, it's you know we just won one Test match, um, so, so so we still we, we mean, this is a new new beginning for us, and you know we know have work to do. Meanwhile, cricket commentator Ian Bishop, former Test fast bowler, took to X, formerly known as Twitter, calling for all hands on deck to ensure new star Shamar Joseph remains in West Indies colours and not snatched up by global T20 leagues. And here's what he said. The Guyanese pledged his dedication to the West Indies during the press conference. Um, essentially, Bishop had suggested that there needs to be a, a strong effort to ensure that the player is guided well and uh, that you know he he isn't too distracted by the temptations of global t20 20 leagues and as we said joseph himself had uh, pledged at the press conference to be resilient and solid in his commitment to west indies cricket to play test cricket for the west indies i'm actually live here and i'm not afraid to see this there, there will be times that um t20 might come around test cricket will be there and I will say this live, I, I would always be available to, be able to play for the West Indies, no matter how much money it takes or come towards me. So I will always be here to play Test Cricket. Yeah, so there you heard it from uh, Shamar Joseph and very, very willing to uh, put his all into West Indies cricket. But only in the last couple of hours we heard of a uh, contract. Um, he is signing with uh, Zalmi in the Pakistan Super League, one of the T20 franchises we, we, we referenced a, a short while ago. And uh, Fazir Mohammed still with us to talk about um, what happened in the past 48 hours with this West Indies team and uh, Shamar Joseph making such a big name for himself. So, uh, Faz, what do you make of, uh, first of all, Bishop's comments, um, which he had um, said after the game ended, and um, Joseph, you know, putting fears to rest as to where his commitment will lie. Well, I'm encouraged to hear that. And, and clearly he's someone who's media savvy. If you recall, we mentioned in the first test match when he did that bow on getting the five wickets, that he's someone who enjoys the atmosphere and the audience. That's why he put himself on the record that test match cricket comes first, even if he signs up to other uh, T20 franchise opportunities, and that's encouraging to hear. But but Ian is right that you don't want a situation where, for reasons of being disillusioned for one thing or the other, that he actually is, is forced to, to change th that position. Uh, I, I will find that very, very difficult uh, to, 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 to swallow, given his, his commitment. But, but again, so often it depends on that level of communication between players and administration. But the broader issue as well, and yes, obviously there's going to be tremendous focus on Shamar Joseph. He deserves it. He deserves all the praise. He deserves all the accolades. But let's not forget that there are 14 other members of the squad, that there were 10 other players in that 11. And for many of them, they must know that even as they rejoice in this famous victory, they have work to do. In the batting department, for those who played both test matches, the best average was 34.5. So there's work to be done there. That's Kurt there's McKenzie. Be... Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. The person I wanted dropped from the first test match who started with a half century. So again, these players need to recognize that when they come back home, the challenge is there for them. When they step into the four-day format, it's about showing that they are test players to score hundreds, big hundreds, take wickets, five wickets, to show as, as when we were growing up and admired our test greats, that you could tell from the way they carry themselves that this is a test player. This is someone who plays for the West Indies. To not just return to the ranks of the mediocre. Yeah. Faz, our understanding is that his Pakistan Super League contract with Zalmi, which is Darren Sami's team, by the way, 
would mean that he would miss some of the West Indies 4-day championship, um, the important red ball domestic game that prepares our players for test cricket. Is this a development that would bother you? It wouldn't bother me. It might have bothered me a few years ago because the world has changed, Lance, and we, we have to recognize that whether we like it or not. Desmond Haynes' test score came to an end because he was playing provincial cricket in South Africa and not playing domestic cricket for Barbados in 1995. And, and the, the, there was a hue and a cry to a certain level. Now, there's hardly a murmur because how do you tell a player to turn down this opportunity? How do you tell a player, well, put that aside. We, our compensation is not to the same level. It's not a pittance, as we heard from, from the CEO, uh, Johnny Gray. He made it clear that the players are not paid a pittance, but it can't compare with what the big nation's players are earning. So I don't begrudge any player opting to sign up to a, a contract of that nature so long as they prioritize representing the West Indies. And in this case, Shamar Joseph has made it crystal clear that his priority is test match cricket for the West Indies. Right, and Faz, I just want to delve into what Ian Bishop said, you know, just outline exactly what he said about the importance for the board, the Guyana government and corporate bodies to find a way to allocate funds to compensate not just Shamar Joseph, but one or two other fast bowlers to keep them in the Caribbean and ensure that they're not burnout. And, you know, that, that use of the word burnout and... That has happened with plenty of our cricketers previously. Your take. And that's a very good point. Uh, with other nations that are wealthier, you would see players turn down IPL contracts because they want to stay fresh to play for Australia or England. Of course, as we know, with Indian players, they don't play any T20 cricket yeah. outside of IPL because, again, the money is there for them to be financially comfortable for them and their families. It's not the case for, for West Indies cricket. And many will be saying, you know, these players are greedy. They are making 200,000 US or 300,000 US, or in some cases, maybe as much as 500,000 US, which translates, depending on the currency, to several millions of dollars. And, and again, you, we will look at them and say, you can't be satisfied with that. Well, if you look on the global stage, you can't. Because one, your career is much shorter than someone who's working until 60, 65. And two, you are looking at players who may be on par with your, your level of performance or maybe inferior, earning a lot more. So, I, again, we don't, we don't have this discussion in football, so why should we have it in cricket? Mm. Interesting, Faz. So, um, Joseph has already signed up with the ILT20, and now we've heard of this news of the Pakistan Super League. So, some amount of T20 cricket for him to play over the next um, couple of months. There is always the possibility, at least as far as I'm concerned, that he could end up in the IPL as well. And there is a T20 World Cup this year. He um, has not before now been looked at or even would have been thought about or was thought about um, about playing T20 cricket for the West Indies. But with the World Cup coming up this year, would you look at him for that T20 setup any at all as someone who can impact a game with his pace with the new ball and pick up early wickets? I would definitely not rule him out, but that's why I would have a discussion. And, and this is the point, Ricardo, Mariah and Lance. We've often heard that, that issue coming up. And, and Ian quite rightly talked about the web, Cricket West Indies, the guy on the cricket board, guy on the government, maybe corporate sponsors. Maybe this is the catalyst to finally have that proper round table discussion. Not the usual putting on a show round table discussion with all sorts of fancy rhetoric and so on. Maybe this is the time for, for Cricket West Indies, the territorial boards, uh, corporate sponsors, those with a genuine interest in the welfare of Western cricket to say, look, let's see what can be done to provide. Mm. I think we've lost Faz. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Faz was making an important point, though, Lance and Mariah, as it relates to having the conversation to see how we go from here. I've heard individuals suggest that the point Ian Bishop made will not work. Um, either because they do not believe we have the resources in the region, even with the complete buy-in of the governments, um, even with the complete buy-in of uh, 
um, corporate entities yes. that we may just not have enough to do what Ian Bishop is suggesting. But I think Faz is very much right. We have to have the conversation. We have to see how best we can get this done. You, yeah. Part of the problem, of course, is going to be the fact that West Indies, um, as Faz has pointed out so often, plays limited test cricket. We're, West Indies finished a test tour of Australia. They play again in July. Only two tests. Only two test matches. Yes. And so, but for me, it's about work and load management. And it's about putting in place a system, especially with your fast bowlers. I think your batsmen can get away with it, mm -hmm. but and your spinners can get away with that ball. But with your fast bowlers, there has to be a plan, especially those with genuine pace, to protect those. I don't know how it is going to be done because it will need buy-in from everyone, including the players themselves. Yeah. But yeah, we have to have that conversation in a very yeah. serious way. And I'm happy that the conversation has started from a man like Ian Bishop. Yeah. Because just putting it out there, now we're having the discussion. I think it sometimes we may take things for granted and feel as if, you know, those in authority, those making the decisions are thinking along the same path. But I feel like sometimes we need to to be that force where we act as a reminder. So this is a reminder. We need to sort out these fast bowlers. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to come right back. We have a lot more sports to talk about.